Hey everyone, Gabriel from Gabriel's Hobby Studio here. Today is part two of the Beastman Pit Fighter build for Necromunda. We'll be painting the model. After giving this model a Xenothal Prime, I'm going to start with the skin tones. I'm going to use Dark Oath Flesh in multiple thin coats to achieve a dark tone without a lot of work. You can achieve the same effect by using a brown wash or very thinned down brown paint, although I would recommend a little orange or red to make the brown warmer. The next thing I'm moving on to now is the pants. And I'm just using red and I'm having to do two thin coats because the first coat is not opaque enough and the red does not show up as vibrantly as I want it to. With most of the other colors on this model being warm, I want to bring in some cool tones. So I brought in a dark purple to put on the skirt, just mixing equal parts red and blue. The boots and the mask are rather simple. I'm just using a flat black color covering them in their entirety. Later on, I'll bring out the details with the dry brush and then reintegrate them into the base coat with a black wash. For the gun holster, I'm using a light brown color. I know this will be darkened up later, so this is a good color to put down for now. For this shoulder pad, I'm using the same technique that I used in a previous video, card up in the top right of the screen now. What I'm doing is putting down a base coat of orange, and then on the uppermost surface where light would be more likely to reflect, I'm adding in more layers of orange, each time adding more yellow and only painting in a smaller area to create a highlight. Once I've finished with all of these layers, I will tie them all together by using a orange glaze. I'm also putting down that same base coat of orange on the non-metallic portion of the other shoulder pad. I felt that base coat of purple was too dark to begin with, so I'm brightening that up with some highlights now. I just added some white into that purple I made earlier. In regards to the helmet, I'm going with a standard green, and I know this is gonna get darkened up later, so I'm using a brighter color for now. So for all the colors that I'm planning on being gold or bronze later, I'm putting down a dark brown undercoat to help those colors pop out a little bit more. And I'm also taking the same brown and using that for the hair on the model. All right, we're finally moving into the metallics now. For the scales on the skirt, I'm using a gold color from P3, but any gold will do and I'm making sure to get good coverage in even if I have to do multiple coats. For the waistband, I'm using silver and I'm using that same color for the armor plate on the thigh and for all of the ax blades. This bronze color that I'm using is just a combination of my silver and my gold color and I coated the entire mechanical arm in that color as well as this metal emblem on its back. Going back into silver now, I'm just overbrushing the chainmail that's hanging on the cheeks of the model and painting the spikes on the shoulder pad. And for a couple of details on that stomach plate, I'm using a copper color. Moving on to the base, I'm just using raw sienna to cover the entirety of the base. After getting this much of the model painted, I didn't like how the hair looked, so I decided to mix a very light yellow-green and put that over the hair. And the horns looked too fleshy, so I mixed up a rather light tan color to go over the top. It's now time to go through and dry brush the model. I'm giving all of the metallics a silver dry brush, and everything else is getting a very light dry brushing of white. We're on to the wash step where everything kind of comes together. I'm starting out with a brown wash, applying that to the flesh, hair, the horns, and select metallic pieces along with the base. The reason I'm putting it on some of the metallic areas is I want there to be some brown grime undercoat on it later. The reason why I said that the wash brings everything together is because it kind of unifies all the colors and it goes into all the recesses and shades those areas. 
Next, I'm going in with my black wash and everywhere that I didn't get the brown wash, I'm going to put the black wash down. The exception to this is I'm adding the black wash to a lot of the metallic areas that did get brown wash earlier, but that's just to darken and further emphasize the grime on these metal bits. When you're going to work on the wash step, there are a couple things you need to keep in mind. You want to make sure that whatever paints you're putting the wash on are dry so they don't muddy together. And you also want to make sure that when you're switching between different colors of wash, you want to make sure that the first one is dry before you move on to the next one. That way you don't have, in my case, brown and black washes mixing together in areas that I didn't want them to. So the last thing that I need to do now is just paint the rim of the base black and that's it. What did you guys think about this kit bash and painting? Uh, please let me know in the comments below.